Hi everyone, Brandon Lee and Tom Burton here from Modern Seller HQ and of course our show, Social Selling for Newbies. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I think that this is a really, really important conversation as sales teams are picking their heads up and realizing a lot of our normal motions just aren't working like they used to. And so today we're going to talk about the difference between creating demand versus capturing demand. We're going to define it. We're going to talk a little bit about it. And what I really appreciate is you, Tom, and uh, his book, The Revenue Zone. You can see it over his shoulder. And his book, Tom and I were friends before, but when his book came out, like I stalked him and pursued him and said, hey, this book's really changed the way I complete looking at sales. And so, Tom, um, gosh, can you just kind of unpack that a little bit for everybody? Like, what do we mean with creating demand versus capturing demand? And why should we change that lens in looking at it? Yeah, so excellent questions, right? So let's just talk about what capture demand means. So in most markets, in most B2B markets, there's only a, a small subset, usually between one and 3% of companies that are what are called in market, which means they're actively looking for an actively involved and looking for a product or service similar to what you sell. So that usually means they have an initiative, they have a budget, there's a project, there's something going on to actually, again, lead to that outcome of purchasing a product or service. And in most B2B markets, that'll range between 1% to 3% of the total addressable market for that area, which is relatively small, right? which means that 97% of that market are not in market and actively looking for a product or service like what you sell. Well, what most of us do in the, in the, the historically in the sales industry is we try and go after the 1% to 3% that are in market, and we try and capture that demand, right? The demand is- Call, been- send emails, right. do right. all that. Or we use, you know, we buy Google ads or whatever the case may be to, to net those people mm-hmm. that are in market to capture the demand. And we all fight for those 3%, right? If the competitors and everything that are there. Again, there's not that there's anything wrong with that. But the problem is, is that, again, we all fight for that 3%. It becomes very competitive. It becomes that very bloody red ocean that we're all going after. It makes it, in a lot of cases, more difficult to sell. You're having to you know, potentially discount more than you would like, all of those things. So what creating demand is, is really looking at the other 97% or whatever the number is in that market and going, how can I possibly reach those 97% that are not in market, but how do I then reach them, build a relationship, and then use that relationship as a foundation to create demand to the point where they are a valid prospect and an opportunity? For my product or service. Blue ocean, not a lot of competition in there. Um, Obviously, you have other challenges. You have to get attention and you have to be get that. And we'll talk about how to do that. But that's what we're talking about when we talk about capturing demand versus creating demand. Yeah. And and I think, you know, I want to encourage everybody as you're listening to this, most of you are in the sales side of the business. Um, but I want you to I want to encourage you to take your take your sales hat off for a little bit and put your buyer's hat on and think about the way that you like to buy. And I think one of the really important questions we ask in Modern Seller HQ community is, do you sell the way that you like to buy? And if you don't, and that's a big problem. So as Tom keeps unpacking this about creating demand, you know, wear, wear that buyer's hat. And think about your buyers and the actions that they actually do versus the ones that we wish they did. Like, you know, answer our cold calls, return our cold calls and show up for demos. Um, And the other thing too, just to talk about that, you may also be thinking if you're a salesperson or a a, a sales team, well, what you just, what I just described, that's marketing's job, right? Marketing's job Mm -hmm. is to go create demand. Uh, Again, marketing, that may be true. But the, you, what the point of this conversation is, as a salesperson or as a sales team, you can actually do that in your own world. You can okay. go create demand, and we'll talk about how you can do that, and actually in some ways do it more effectively and more predictably than you could at a corporate level from a marketing initiative. Yep. And that's what I get excited about is yeah. that it's used right. It's just like it's, you, it gives you superpowers that you wouldn't ordinarily have it at that sales level. Yeah. And and for people listening, I just want to pause that for a second, make sure you heard that because 
um, not only is it true, it should be extremely exciting that as salespeople, we can take our personal activities and instead of pursuing KDI, KPIs that wear us out and don't get a whole lot of fruit, we could actually use our time in a way that is more effective and actually more fun. And that's, that's what excites me about it. I mean, I, I love my job. I love what I get to do and engaging and talking with people and creating content and then watching the opportunities that are coming in. It, it reminds me of that video or some of those videos are out there. Where you see the person driving down in their boat and they're cruising down a river and then like fish start jumping in their boat. Right. I mean, isn't that what a fisherman would like? Isn't that what we as salespeople would yeah. like? And the reality is this isn't a pipe dream. We, we can do that. We just have to have the courage to shift our activities yep. uh, and, and to align with the way buyers are buying. Yep, completely. So let's jump. Do you want to jump in now to kind of how we go about doing yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. So, so there's two parts to this, right? Which is you have to get you have to get attention. You have to build attention. You have to be able to get the attention of a, of a prospect that you want to create that demand with. And you have to get attention in a way that it's not just, hey, here I am, but there's actually a relationship that's underneath that attention that's there. So the um, so what the goal is here is is to, first of all, build that healthy connection with somebody, right? We talk about that in other places and using social prospecting and, you know, Brandon, you're your secret sauce, if you will, for social prospecting, following that framework, Love all that those framework. pieces, and you get healthy connections. Healthy connections are people that you've built a relationship with, and they're most likely willing to have some form of engagement with you in a conversation, business, personal, or otherwise. Yep. Okay. If you've got that foundation, now that's awesome. And you have their attention, or they're willing to give you some attention. You've earned that attention, is what we talked about. Now what you want to do is now use that as a platform to create demand. And you say, well, how, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, the foundation of creating demand is content and using content. Yeah. And content in the right sequence so that you can move somebody from having little or no awareness of your product or service to a point ultimately where they have demand for your product or service. Yeah. And can I highlight for everybody what Tom's talking about is we really look at this as a two-step process. Right. It's and, and again, this is going to follow into the go or go slow to move faster, uh, which is one of the mindsets in modern seller HQ. Like we look at the creating that rapport and relationship, as Tom said, the definition of a healthy relationship is the first step. And it's not that they don't overlap, but we really don't bring sales, our product, you know, anything like that into the first step. Because, as we say, if you smell like a salesperson, buyer's tendency is to stiff arm you and keep you away. And so that's, that's really the value of personal brand. If you hear everybody talking about your personal brand, your personal brand, your personal brand, um, we've always had to think about personal brands. We say that your reputation would precede you. But that first step is about the healthy relationship is somebody now has a high probability that they will engage with you in a conversation. Once you establish that, then we're moving into the next stage, which is where Tom's sweet spot is. And uh, Tom, kind, kind of take, take it from there and talk to everybody so, about how we do that. Yeah, so the creation of the demand is a function of how you use content, right? So content is the fuel to create demand. However, you don't just spray and pray content and, and hope that somebody do it, does it. You have to look at what I call in the book, the yellow brick road, which is how do you put content in the right sequence that takes somebody from knowing nothing about your product or service and building interest, building curiosity, mm -hmm. ultimately building demand. Now, again, I'm going to stop there because people are probably going content. Oh, no, we don't have content for that. Or I don't want to build content. Marketing. Or, that's marketing again. Yeah. Right? And what I think is what I found even more exciting since I even wrote the book is the most effective content is not marketing content, believe it or not. The most effective content is things like social content, social video, uh, videos on social, mm -hmm. on social media that maybe have nothing to do with even you, but you found a video, a Ted talk 
a podcast show that you liked, a, an episode that you've done, or maybe you do your own live show or whatever the case may be. It's much more informally informal content, I guess, for that mm -hmm. versus the official content that's created yeah. within your company. And Tom, can I say this for everybody? What, what got me to fall in love with the book is really when you started talking about helping your buyers, thinking about your buyers and go, what do they need to know and what do they need to believe in order to demand to talk to you? That changed product or service. Yeah. Yeah. That changed my life because I, like so many others, thought, okay, first conversation had to have a value proposition and get them interested to get on a phone. And what you lay out helped me. And, you know, watching my wife with her cat one day, and, you know, her cat walks up to her and loves and everything and then looks at me and goes, <laughs> and I've got to like put down a treat like three feet away from me to get him to come near me. And then maybe I could do a treat and, you know, he'll get up to a foot and, and, you know, it's like buyers are like scared cats. If we smell like a salesperson, man, they bolt. And so talk a little bit about, I, I just, I think for me, the aha moment came on when you looked at, when you, when you talked about knowing and believing. Yeah. Well, what you had to do with your cat is you had to lay out a yellow brick road of treats, right? Exactly. To to you. Um, but again, I, just to reiterate, we're starting with that healthy connection, which gives us a big head start because now we have earned some attention. We've earned a relationship and that everything will go much smoother. So again, I want to reiterate that. But then once that has been done, now you're laying out and looking at, you're looking at, okay, for the typical buyer, right? What content would take them through that, what we call the yellow brick road in some sequence over some time not overnight, not in two steps or whatever. Our yellow brick roads, a lot of times will have 25 steps in them along the way and different milestones to get them to that point where they're going to buy. But one of the first things you have to do to build that yellow brick road to kind of reverse engineer it is you have to look and say, okay, well, to get somebody in that upper right corner that I call the revenue zone, which is the demand, what does my buyer need to understand about my product or service? Mm. But maybe even more importantly, what do they need to believe about my product and service? If I, if I have somebody that understands these three things and believes the three, these three things about my product, service, or company, there's a very high probability they're going to be demanding that. And if I understand that, then I can work backwards and say, these are the things, the content that I need to provide in the proper sequence again, the yellow brick road that will lead them to that point. But if I don't know where I'm trying to get to, if I don't know what it is I'm trying to get them to understand or believe, then it becomes a spray and pray content strategy, or if nothing else, a road that winds all over the place and ends up nowhere, yeah. which is what we, which we don't want to do. Yeah, but again, I, well, go ahead. Sorry, Brandon. Well, I was just say, I think sales leaders right now, you know, I want to pause Tom for a second, just let you absorb that. It's the difference between hurry up and make more calls and get this stuff, send more emails and get this out there to knowing where is this person on the yellow brick road and what is the next, do I put this treat three feet away from me or do I put this treat six inches away from me? Right. And when I put the treat there, do I sit still? Do I sit on the ground? Like it really is truly for me, that analogy, um, but it's in the other thing that you said, you're like, what do they need to know and believe about your product? But I've learned from you, it's not just about the product. It's what do they need to believe about themselves, about their company and about their industry? A good point. We could be the source of that information, in which case we become that trusted advisor. Exactly. And no, that's, really a, that's a huge point right there. And I'm glad you pointed that out because it's not just, hey, I know three things about your product or whatever, but it's, I believe that this needs, my, this product is, or what you do is important. Yeah. It's I important believe I have this challenge and problem. Right. I believe right. this is going to continue to be a challenge. Right. You know, it, anything along those lines about their, their world right. and their circumstances. Absolutely. I believe that I need to do something to change from where I am to where I, I need to be. I need to transform something. All of those things could fit into that. But again, we work out and we say, rather than coming up with 50 of those, what are three things? that your buyer needs to believe, what are three things that they need to understand, and then let's work backwards to achieve that through content. And again, we, and we could go a whole nother episode on this, on I, which I call the modern yellow brick road, because yep. it really wasn't the way I was looking at this, frankly, when I wrote the book. 
I was looking at using more traditional marketing type content when I wrote the book. But what I've learned is that the, the more powerful content mm -hmm. is some of this informal type content that's out, you know, social content and shows Dark and episodes and, and, right, yeah. and all of that. And if you use that properly combined with some of your marketing content or your, you know, formal content together, it can even get a faster boost and get and yeah. get you to your prospect to the yellow to the revenue zone faster. Yeah, and I'm going to say for everyone listening and Tom asking you, I think we need to do a little a little video on the difference between the yellow brick road and the modern yellow brick road and what's the difference. So when you're watching this, we may have it out already, but yeah. um, that is a really great point because we've learned this ourselves over the last year and yeah. looked at wait a minute this type of content is jet fuel compared yeah. to this type of content yeah. and to a yeah. point that we've shifted entirely yeah. to this new modern content, which yeah. look, if you're listening to this, you know, it it's, it's our, our podcast, our live show and our community. Um, that's it's our videos jet fuel. like this and right? videos like this. Right. This it's is our videos jet fuel. like this. And, and this is what our customers start right. to do right. um, because it works. It works right. really well. And what I we get excited about is that by using modern content, it enables anybody, right? An individual, an individual salesperson or a small sales team or even an entrepreneur or whatever the case may be, you don't have to have a big marketing staff backing you up on all of this. If you do, if you do, that's great, but you don't have to have that. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. Well, Tom, as we wrap this up, how do, what do you want to leave with everybody uh, to make sure just just that clarity of creating demand versus capturing demand? Well, I think there's a couple of things. One, understanding the difference, right? So when you get when you get up in the morning and you go to work, understand what percentage of your time that you're using to capture demand. And again, I'm not saying don't go try and capture demand, but let's look at where you're spending time. And how much time are you spending working on capturing demand and how much time are you looking at creating demand, first of all, yeah. and really break those out. As a, as yeah. A and when you're working on capturing demand, you're working on 3% of the market. You're, know that, right? Right. Know and if you're, if, you're, if you're neglecting the creating demand, you're neglecting 97% of, of the market. market. And right. when buyers do 70% of their research before they want to talk to you, your, your hook and, well, and bait are in the wrong part right. of the lake. But the good news is, and we've seen this is, is that buyers, when again, you do the creating demand that we just talked about and you build that relationship and they're willing to talk to you earlier. They're willing to engage with you early. They're, they're not so much, Hey, just hands off. I'm going to go do this. They you become more of a partner with them, which yeah. that's the dream of a salesperson, right? Is to be a right. partner of that trusted advisor and, with them. And I would say the word is more want to talk to you than willing to talk to you. Good point. I mean, it gets there to a point right. where it's, right. they want to talk to you, right. which is creating demand. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, so that's what it's about. And then spend time, look at your KPIs, you know, like we can talk another, another show about how you measure and do KPIs and measurement for creating demand, but spend consciously spend time on creating demand and follow the social prospecting framework for creating those healthy connections and then follow what we have in the modern seller HQ community, which is all the details of, of how you use the revenue zone and the yellow brick road and all of that, follow that, put it into place and you will start to see results. And that's what I, I get excited about. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, everybody, Hey, thank you for uh, joining Tom and I in this. And if you have any questions, um, you know, reach out to us, put them into the Modern Seller HQ community, um, reach out to us on social media, whatever it may be. Um, we're here to help. And we just, we're, we're loving this is that we get to have a lot of fun um, while serving customers and creating a lot of demand, which is really fun. And yeah. learning with you. So yeah, please yeah. do see us and we'll see you in the community.